uh, you and before I know whether I can take on the project, I have to do a conflicts check because right. obviously I represent Coca-Cola and Pepsi calls me and says, well, we have this great idea. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, don't tell me exactly what the idea is. I got to see if I can take on this matter. I always ask, what is the problem that it's solving? Okay. And so the, the entrepreneur can do the same thing with the investor. Let me tell you the, the, the advantages, the, the great things. Uh, the analogy I use a lot is let's just say you invented the, the coolest um, you know, improvement to electronic fuel injector. I can tell it everything that it can do. Um, I'm just not going to lift the hood and show you what how I did it. Welcome to Can Heat, a podcast brought to you by Liger Partners. We are marketing operations experts, bred for our skills in branding, strategy, and execution. And they say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And today I'm in the right room <laughs> because I am not the smartest person at this table. It depends on the topic, don't you think? We're talking, okay, we have a lawyer in the room and we're talking about intellectual property. Okay, yeah, true. Yes. I even struggled saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have our chief strategist, Eric Holtzclaw with Liger Partners. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Steve Wigmore of yourpatentexpert.com. Thank you. And Smith and Temple. Great. So welcome. Thank you. We're excited to have you here. Excited to be here. IP is very important for all business owners. True. And... Um, so we're in ABGT together, and you always say that IP isn't rocket science, but you work with rocket scientists. That's correct. <laughs> it feels a little bit like rocket science to me, Steve. Uh, and and <laughs> it can be. Uh, I, I think that's um, the, the website that I'm developing, which is going to be more of a billboard, but also uh, an aid uh, to people out there with ideas that they want to seek patent protection on. Um, that. The process, it, the good thing for me, I guess, it hasn't changed over 20 years, um, but it is a little complicated. But I guess the point of my uh, slogan uh, is that a lot of times I do work with rocket scientists and it is, so what they have is a lot more complicated than what I do. Uh, what I do is a little bit complicated, but not as complicated as that. Um, but for somebody who's, uh, I, I think I put in my materials that um, if you've been around, I wanna say the patent block, for at least seven years or more, using an experienced lawyer, that, that usually qualifies someone as a patent expert. And that's what I think everyone, whether you know you don't have to go with me, but any any patent lawyer that's been practicing law for seven years uh, is your litmus test. That's who you want to work with when you want to protect your intellectual property, is especially in the patent space. Yeah, and so you use the word, so you say intellectual property and patents, and then you hear trademarks and registered and da 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 da. So break that <laughs> <laughs> because that's I think we're, that's where people get confused. Yep. Like, well, am I patenting this, or is it something I need to trademark, or sure. how do I know if I patent it? And there's a utility patent versus a, a design patent. Yes, all that and wonderful stuff. Ideas versus apps, and when do you need which for what? So how much so time we're do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's no clock, so yeah. technically you don't have a clock. Yeah, <laughs> so, and and I'm I'm thinking about who will probably uh, watch this, and so what um, amount of time that you have. To, so yes, yeah, so there it is um, a lot of material to cover because there are uh, I guess various forms of IP protection. Um, so I, I guess I'm trying to think of the simplest way to categorize them. So as I leaded today with patents, those protect ideas, and usually they're technology-driven. Um, trademarks, and I always use trademarks as, uh, think of the derivation of the word, trademark, and reverse it a little bit, a mark that identifies your trade. So nice. I, I use the analogy of going back to uh, the cattle days when we all had our ranches, um, that you would sell cattle you know, various cattle in different ranches, yeah. you know, whether it be uh, ranch one, ranch two, ranch three, how do we identify our cattle? We stamp it. Right. So that's your trademark. So ranch one would have its own mark, ranch two, because the cattle all looks the same, may not always be the same quality, right. but that's how you set yourself apart is your branding. So trademarks is the branding. Now, copyrights is interesting. I, I would say that copyrights is more of the artistic side. So um, my classic example I've used in um, lectures that I've done is uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. So let's assume that Van Gogh 
is still with us today and that he just painted Starry Night, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so that's, he, he painted an image of a starry night. Everyone can go out there. That's not really a new idea per right, se. Right. Um, but it, it's his expression of the idea that's different. It's very unique to him, the way his brush strokes captures that, yeah. that idea. So it's the, um, the expression of that idea in a tangible medium of expression, which means it's locked in the paint, the painting. So you can paint, go out there and paint your own Starry Night and not look at Van Gogh's and come up with your own rendition. And so you would be eligible because it's an independently created by you. That's, that's your own rendition of Star, uh, Starry Night. So you can have a copyright to your expression of the same idea. But as soon as you start copying his work, so you're trying to mimic his brush strokes, uh, copy it exactly for what you see, then that's the copyright you're violating. He would be entitled to a copyright to his expression of that idea. So those are the, I want to say, three core, um, I want to say, tenants or uh, different forms of intellectual property. Now, there is a fourth called trade secrets, and trade secrets is very close to patents, but it doesn't have to be as it's complicated. It's the Coca-Cola formula, right? There you go. <laughs> very good. Uh, that's an example I use a lot for uh, describing trade secrets. So trade secrets can be highly technical, and they can be as complicated as patents, or they can be very de minimis, uh, very small. So you're uh, a marketing company, and you work with companies that assemble lists. They look at competitors. you assembling phone numbers and uh, lists of things of your competitors is enough to be a trade secret. Trade secret. So, so one thing uh, on the patent side, because I I lived in the world of startups for a long time, and we talk, we work with startups. I still live with them too. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure that you do. And you know, there's this. So I've been both kind of on the investor side and on the startup side. Sure. And there's this really weird thing that happens often, where you know the the startup comes in, they're like, "Well, that's my intellectual property, and we're getting a patent on it." And so unless you sign this thing, Mister. Yeah. A venture capitalist mm -hmm. or investor, mm -hmm. or, right? Then I don't want to the show idea. this with you. And then the the investors like, <laughs> see ya. Wouldn't want right. to be ya, right? Like there, there's this delicate balance between the two of them. And then often, what's so funny is that you didn't hear the idea, and it really <clears throat> is that new. <laughs> like, oh, that's the sixth time really I've heard that. that. Good? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the what's that balance? Of, and, and we run into that too, like all the time when we're talking with like new companies when they're bringing something to market, like. What can I tell you and how secret and how do I know that it's worth protecting, you know? And those are, I mean, very good and valid questions about, um, I mean, and, and ultimately you want to, I mean, so the, the idea owner, the person who originated the idea, they do want to protect it. And an NDA is the best way to do it because uh, basically an NDA is a contract. And so what, what an NDA, NDA allows that the idea owner do once you sign it is if you violate it, if he, he knows that you just basically right after the meeting went on the internet and described right. what the idea was, as you heard yeah. in the meeting, then he would have a contract to go after, take you to court, say you violated the contract and I want X amount of damages because you basically told the world right. against the contract. Right. Um, and so it, it can scare investors sometimes because they may hear a lot of different ideas, so they're worried about the contractual aspect to it yeah they're so, also they'll say too like uh it's like the the concept of oh, i'm an investor like why am i going to go you know that their, their concept is like i'm not gonna steal your idea i'm not in the right. business of stealing your idea so just tell me your idea and if not then let's just move on but if you know representing the interests of the you know the entrepreneur you know they're they're just you know all forms of investors and inventors out there yeah. uh, so some investors could take the idea mm -hmm. so uh, it, it's it's just a, a, a balance, and I think most investors, if if, and this is the thing where the um, uh, the entrepreneur or the inventor may you can give like kind of like I want to say a high level, uh, you know, a, a broad concept without really telling what it is mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. interest. So as long as the uh, entrepreneur can tell the investor, I think this is something. This is generally what this will do, and so often you know as a, a lawyer. For me to represent uh, you, and before I know whether I can take on the project, I have to do a conflicts check because right. obviously if I represent Coca Cola and Pepsi calls me and says, "Well, we have this great idea." I'm like, "Wait a minute, okay, don't tell me exactly what the idea is. I got to see if I can take on this matter." I always ask, "What is the problem that it's solving?" 
Okay. And so the, the entrepreneur can do the same thing with the investor. Let me tell you the, the, the advantages, the, the great things. Uh, the analogy I use a lot is let's just say you invented the, the coolest um, you know, improvement to electronic fuel injector. I can tell it everything that it can do. Um, I'm just not going to lift the hood and show you what, how I did it. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's actually good advice anyway. Because typically they tell you all the stuff all the stuff about it, the specs, and you're like, I don't really care about and that. And especially the investor yeah, may not solve. even, yeah. What's that's this all? not, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so the details, and that's, so so I can al already segue into patent protection. The details on how to make and build it is how you secure patent protection because patent protection is a quid pro quo. In exchange for you telling the world how to build that electronic fuel injector, then if they believe it's different enough, they will issue a, a patent grant on it. So yeah. you have to tell all those details. For the investor, you're right. He just wants to know is going to sell. Yeah. How is it going to mm -hmm. sell? What are mm -hmm. the results? So, oh, it can go really fast. Zero to sixty in one point five seconds. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's a V eight and weighs this much and go that fast. Right. Okay, yeah. That's so you can tell a lot of you know non technical details to get the interest to see if they will sign the NDA just in case you want to share what's under the hood. But a lot of times that's the the rub that inventors are not sure how much do I need to protect or not share. Yeah. Uh, so I don't run the risk of losing my idea. Okay, that makes sense. So I want to take it back to Van Gogh for a minute. And the liberal arts side. Yes. <laughs> and let's take it to when did they come to you, Steve? So like Van Gogh had an idea for a painting. Sure. Does he come to you then because he doesn't want anyone to steal the idea or does he have to have some proof, right? Like maybe he painted it and everyone's like, I want that. And then he's like, oh, this is a hot selling item. I need to protect it before somebody else tries to recreate it. So when in that process... Do they start? So for a, with a you? copyright, I mean that's a very interesting side, and the painting example is, is definitely ripe. Um, that you can it's an expression of your idea. So it's like so I think uh, Van Gogh should uh, develop and basically create the painting in his studio, but not show everyone else per se, uh, and and basically you know ask should I seek re registration of the copyright. Mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting about the registration system for copyrights compared to patents is that it's really not until someone actually starts trying to steal, you know, recopy or copy your, your work that you would want to enforce your copyright. Um, so, so from a very legal uh, standpoint, you don't have to register your copyright right away. I mean, so the copyright is created as soon as you put it in, they call it the fixed, this is the legalese, the fixed <laughs> tangible medium of expression. So as soon as Van Gogh locks it in the paint, it's dry, it's not wet, it's dried, it's secured mm -hmm. into the painting. The copyright was created right then. Um, Interesting. He does not have to register the, his copyright in, until he finds infringement, until he starts seeing, you know, let's just say mm -hmm. he did it in his studio and then he's like, well, you know, I want to sell this on the internet. So he takes a digital photo and puts it on the internet. Then all of a sudden he starts seeing other photos on the internet and like, oh my gosh, someone has just really copied my work and now I'm going to sell a photograph of my work. Well, then he can seek registration at that point as soon as he starts seeing infringement. So you can actually file a copyright suit without even having the registration and they will stay the litigation so that you can get the registration. But that's much different than patent protection. Usually patent protection, you want to file immediately and usually before it goes public. Um, just because you run the, run the risk, yeah, yeah. opposite to copyrights, patents is now a first to file system, whereas the copyright registration system, it's just a registration. Mm -hmm. Like They don't mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. the order in which you file. Patents is if it's the same idea and you've independently created it and you file first, then you get the patent for you're, you're awarded the patent. The other, the second party that was late to the patent office does not get the patent. So it's a it's a race to to file system for patents for protecting the ideas. And so then in the patent side of the equation, so entrepreneurs here, you know, you file the patent and then da, 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 like they, they, there's like this timeline thing. It's like so how. Long does it take for them to hear back? Can I go ahead and start on the idea? Is this delaying my progress? You it's know. interesting you brought that up. I created a graphic <laughs> oh, did you? Uh, okay. that's going to be on my website, uh, your, yourpatentexpert.com, that I call it my sweet 16 patent process okay. because I outline the 16 steps of basically taking your idea and securing patent protection, but it's in a very easy readable format and gives you the timeline. Right. So usually for patent protection, uh, as soon as you have the idea and you think patent protection may be something that, because it's, and this is the part where I can bring in my 20 years plus of experience, 
uh, the, the think of a, a patent as an asset. It's not really going to be the revenue generator for your business. It's right. an asset to a business. Mm -hmm. well, which so, is an important so, point. So yeah. you need yeah. to create a business and then this is going to become an asset that's part of the business. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just trying, and this is where garage inventors and entrepreneurs get, have this, and then I actually was looking at my, I don't know if I want to say they're competitors because I went on Invent Help. It's interesting, we can talk about that a little bit about Invent Help, but um, that uh, you can basically uh, go to these other websites and they're just going to try to promote your idea. They're yeah. not going to help you protect it. Right. Um, so you really want to engage someone fairly quickly to to help you decide, okay, does the patent process make sense? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's that delicate balance that I see when I've seen a lot of investor pitches, obviously. And so someone <laughs> will come up with a patent and then they're talking to the investor and they say, well, when I get the money, I'll build the thing. And the investor's like, when you build the thing, I'll give you the money. <laughs> right, right. right. The chicken or egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. That's no, no, very true. It's very yeah. true. So, uh, and, and that's one of the things when I'm working with uh, inventors is like, yes, you do have to, it, to get, to secure that asset, you do have to spend a little money. But I, my, my whole thing, and as my sweet 16 patent process will tell you, is that I want you to, to spend very little amount of money to buy you time to see if you can get traction right. with investors, that, that your idea will sell. And that's one of my big things in my process. I say that if you don't start making money within that first six months of filing for patent protection, uh, then I say, don't then stop. Yeah. Like don't, yeah. don't waste your time and money if it's not, and, and the thing is you have to put in the time to create a business with the patent. Right, okay, um, that's, a, that's really important feedback because that's not necessarily the way they say it. So the, 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 the push, it's like this, this dance, you know, between the person who has the patent idea mm -hmm. and the person mm -hmm. that they want the money from. And you can always tell the person this, the earlier you get the money more, the more expensive it is to you. But at the same time, they don't really understand the feedback they're getting. You know, the investors like, I'm not doing anything with that. Well, you need, you I mean, you need proof of concept. You yeah. need to, and, and I guess. Will somebody as, buy it? Well, even in the startup world, I you know listen to Wall Street Journal a lot in their podcasts, and it's like you know you, when are you going to start making a profit? Right. I mean, um, that was I think I think the WeWork valuation is like, <laughs> well, where do you make money? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're not going to make money, investors yeah. are not going to be that interested. So you need to show that I have a, a a little bit of a track record to show that I can make money with this. And of course, that's where they're going to be interested is oh, you can make money with this. Right. Okay. Now now we'll help you invest with the patent. Yeah. 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 Money or, or the traction side. Cause the funny, you say that, like I, I talked to a guy and there's East coast and West coast investors. Mm -hmm. And so East coast investors are all about what's the revenue, like how much are you making? West coast is about uh, mark, like share voice. So how many people are using it? What kind of progression have you made? Well, it's, oh, I mean, it's somewhat of a market. Yeah, like, are you, you irrespective of price, is there a market? Yeah, for exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why you see a lot of them like give it away for free, but at least if I won't even take it for free, you may not have a product, right? <laughs> there may not be an idea there if I'm not even going to be willing to like, sign up for the alpha or the beta. free that you think is neat, yes. Yeah. That is a great litmus test. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we're rolling into break, but when we come back, I want to talk about the entrepreneur's nightmare. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. So all of you can guess I'm, what I'm that actually is. interested. Yeah, okay, me too. <laughs> I've had a lot of those. So. <laughs> okay, one of the entrepreneur's okay, nightmares. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, moving on to TikTok, another super exciting platform. And we know that the app was previously known as Musically, and it is now becoming what people refer to as the new Vine, allowing users to create short videos using either dancing or comedy to gain followers. And the platform is known for viral memes like the recent OK Boomer meme. Now becoming TikTok famous is a goal for many teens, which has gotten the company in trouble in recent times. In February, the company was actually fined $5.7 million for illegally collecting data from kids under the age of 13. 
And the Beijing-based company has also been accused of censoring controversial content, especially pro-Hong Kong and LGBT content, specifically in China. So, but despite their troubles, TikTok has continued to grow. So uh, I'd say don't count TikTok out when looking at platforms to use for marketing. And as it continues to grow, it may be a fun way to promote your business. Thanks for watching the Liger Partners Media Minute. All right, welcome back to Canned Heat, a podcast brought to you by Liger Partners. I am Whitney Mendoza with Eric Holtzclaw of Liger and Steve Wigmore of Your Patent Expert and Smith Temple. And we're talking about trademark and patents and all that good stuff. And I teased when we went into break and I said we were going to talk about the entrepreneur's nightmare. And so we can take it down the patent path and the trademark path. But what I want to know is, you've done all this work and you've got this cool idea, this cool concept, this cool brand, and you put it out there and you get all the necessary documents and registrations that you need. Sure. And somebody comes along plays with it just enough mm. to where they get around mm. everything you've put in place and maybe they're a bigger guy right so now you're fighting for what's yours if you will and you're going up against big brother so how does that look how what happens in that situation wow yeah that that is and that but that is a real uh did you say nightmare i did so that is that a real, is, that is, is a real, real nightmare. nightmare um so really the 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 blunt honest truth it's tough to fight uh you know the david goliath analogy mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you're david uh the entrepreneur and, and the goliath they just have a lot of power a lot of money um so is it, so both on the patent you know we we touched upon that during our break a little bit the patents and trademarks so as as much as they can just be close enough or uh you know marginally infringing whether your patent or your trademark uh, it, it, it is a contest of money, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so you be careful with those type of battles because uh, especially for, so and as you said, you have all your documentation in place. You have your patent, you have your trademark registration. So you have your rights, you know what they are. Um, and then you can sue uh, Goliath. Just be mindful of yeah. Goliath's uh partner which would be a law firm i used to work with a, a mega power uh you know of, of 100 plus lawyers yeah um that it, it and so to put it in real terms in a patent infringement suit the first year for both parties the burn rate that you're going to spend on your lawyers is going to be at least a million a year wow, wow. that's a lot of money yes, for proving that you're right even though you may be right yeah and a lot of money for may David. Not even be generating that, that amount of revenue. Yeah. So yeah. I guess really, the um, you know the takeaway on that one of really that is a nightmare scenario and mm -hmm. actually a very good one mm -hmm. uh, is that you just kind of withstand it, uh, withstand the the really the, the 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 competition that you thought you could stop, and you tolerate it to the maximum extent that you can, and hopefully build up your war chest that you become profitable. Uh, you may need to bring in some strategists on marketing. How can we trump yeah. the big guy yeah. instead of spending a million on lawyers, which I mm -hmm. would love to do if I was the lawyer. So make it more like a, uh, <laughs> make it like a, uh, you know, one of those sort of word of mouth or something like show that they're doing the things. So that doing. bring in your marketing experts so instead of spending a million a year. How can yeah. we kill them with a marketing campaign for 200,000 a year? Yeah. Right, right. Which is a good Wow, look, play. I connected the dots here, I like guys. That. That's nice. Because a lot of times, people will rally around the Davids of the world. Oh, yeah. They will rally around you. And, and important to your skill set, the story. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can tell mm -hmm. the story about David, because we've all usually heard David and Goliath. Yeah. Uh, it can be a very interesting story to tell. And especially if the big guy, big Goliath, is doing is the we say the tort fees or the bad person, and you can tell that story. Uh, they don't usually the big guy doesn't want bad press, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's so I, I just thinking on my feet. Actually, I think that is I, I've 
never been in the situation where I've told a client to do that per se, because usually uh, we, you know, the facts that I've been exposed to is just too far along for them to do anything that we yeah. just had to ignore the competition. Uh, but I think actually that's really good business advice to see, can you develop a marketing campaign if really they, they, they know how willful they are in infringing your rights, tell that story. Yeah. And, 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 and attack them. You know, your, your press battle is what might win mm -hmm. compared to mm -hmm. don't go down the lawsuit path. Yeah. As yeah. I, I heard a, a, a radio artist say the other day, like, if you've ever been to court before, you know the only winners in court the lawyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I have a property line dispute that fell like that. <laughs> so we were like, <laughs> many people it's just, do. It's just who was going to stop the bleeding? Who was going to stop spending the money on? Yeah. On that I mean, that, that burn rate, I mean, I can't afford a million a right. year. Yeah. I mean, I wish I was successful enough to say that I could, but no, that's, yeah. that's a pretty yeah. steep budget yeah. for is anybody. It, so the, that's kind of the patent side, similar for trademark? The burn rate is probably not as high. Um, so they're a little less complicated than, than patents are. So, uh, I would say ballpark it, you know, probably half that. So half a mil, mm -hmm. maybe a little less than that, but still uh, a lot of money out of yeah. your pocket. What's interesting in that category, cause you know, you hear about lawsuits often in places where there is a relationship. So like you have a business relationship, there's some kind of rules that say, Hey, we're going to arbitrate this or we're going to whatever you get into patents and trademarks. You've got this adversary that you didn't expect you know, yep. there's someone who's come in that you're like oh all of a sudden this is my the person and i've never talked to them or i didn't know that they you know were thinking about that specifically as you get into you know physical product where people mm -hmm. you know, tend to uh replicate those sure well it, yeah. and and but i guess the the upside to our nightmare is they're copying you because you have something good so, you know, that's that's why people copy. Because, well, that's why you have to do the marketing, the original. Or the, you know. Yes. Because yeah. that's yeah. that's why people copy. That's why people want your either the mm -hmm. patent, the idea or the brand, because you have a really great brand or a great idea mm -hmm. protected by the patent. That's why we want to copy you. So it's somewhat of a testament of when you get into a heated battle like that. Obviously, you did come up with something good that the big Goliath wanted to do yeah. it, too. Yeah. yeah. So, Steve. Thank you for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for having me. When does your website launch? Uh, to be determined. Okay. Uh, Speartech, what I don't mind, is yes. helping me develop the website. So uh, Derek Griffin, a free plug-in for him. Uh, Shout out to Derek. So uh, probably in about two or three weeks. So probably Perfect. about uh, first part of December. We will definitely be sure to link so that we can get sure. the sweet 16 steps. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining us yeah. Yeah, for having yeah. Yeah. Canned Heat. No nightmares. Avoid the nightmares <laughs> with the marketing team. That's right. Look at that. I, I tied it all together. <laughs> awesome. Until next time, we'll see you then.